Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to click on this thumbnail and to watch this video that I prepared for you. Also, uh, before I forget, please take a moment to hit the thumbs up button, also the subscribe button, and the notification bell button if you haven't subscribed yet or joined. Hitting the thumbs up really helps out the, ch the, the channel. It helps me in the, the, the YouTube algorithm. Uh, also, if you haven't had the chance yet and you feel like you would like to support my channel more you could certainly hit the join button down below and or you could buy me a coffee over at buy me a coffee either way I, whatever you do i greatly appreciate as it supports my channel and you know helps me out so much Today we're going to talk about a little bit of a news article that I ran across over at the uh, Pharonix, uh website over there, uh, and Pharonix.com, and it's basically regarding, I, I know that in, you know, the whole rel going, you know, proprietary uh, has caused a whole bunch of stuff in the community, and honestly, until it fully gets implemented, until it fully happens, uh, you can't really know what the plans are uh rocky linux alma linux uh all those guys we which are forks of rel uh, uh we we don't know exactly what the future is for them because we got to see how it's going to work out for the you know what what rel is going to do with them or or not you know uh so it's going to be difficult for them granted but whether they're, it's going to be the end of them or not i don't know um, I know that a lot of people in the in the comments that I've read uh, all over the place and people talking to me have said that they've already left Rocky or Alma and they went to, you know, whatever, you know, Ubuntu or whatever else they decided to go to for their server stuff. So uh, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a professional in that field, so I don't know what any contingency plans were, but I can tell you this, uh, both in a day Today use, whether you use it daily as a daily driver for whatever reason, or you're implementing it across a actual um, server form or whatever it is that you're doing, uh, you should always have a contingency plan. So I'm only hoping that as a true professional, you had a contingency plan in place and you've already migrated to whatever to cover your bases until you are on solid ground again, knowing what it is that you're going to do. That is just my advice. Um, as a former military, you would want to uh, definitely implement a plan, you know, plan B, because uh, as we used to say, man, the most effective plan A is to have a very effective plan B. So that being said, uh, what I want to talk about is uh, Fedora's Workstation 4. They're considering to implement privacy preserving telemetry. I know. Mind blow. Telemetry that's actually privacy preserving. That's almost like an oxymoron. Uh, <laughs> all in one. Uh, but no, actually that is what they're trying to do. And basically what they're trying to do, we can go ahead and take a look at the website. So what they're trying to do is, as you can see, it's at the Pharonix. So I've got it open up right here in my, in my Firefox browser. That's something to note. Alex is a brave guy. I'm using Firefox, but either way, uh, it's because I'm testing out some Firefox stuff. But so Fedora Workstation 4 to consider in the privacy to implement the privacy telemetry, preserving telemetry. And what it's basically saying is, is we believe in an open source community can ethically collect limited aggregate data on how software is used without involving big data companies or building creepy tracking profiles that are not the best interest of users. Users will have the option to disable data upload before the data is even sent for the first time. Now, once I'm assuming that what they're saying is once you've decided to send it once, then you have no more control over that, that it's only at that time that you're going to be able to stop it from ever happening again. And if you click on it to never send it, then it will never send it. So our service will be operated by Fedora on Fedora infrastructure and will not depend on Google Analytics or any other controversial third-party services. So they're taking it 
accordingly out of the hands of Google. Sorry about that. Let me mute my phone. I thought it was muted. They're taking it out of the hands of Google and any other non-trusted parties because that's important. You know, the last thing we want is Google and those people to have all that kind of information because that's why most of us are on like Brave Search or our Firefox with ad blockers and all that kind of crap. So uh, that's a good thing to know. And in contrast to proprietary software operating systems, uh, you can redirect the data collected to your own private metric server instead of Fedora's to see precisely what data is being collected from you because the server components are open source. So that's cool too. They're turning not only over, they're not only turning over the actual data to you, but they're actually making it kind of open source so that you can actually see exactly, which is a first. I've never recalled any type of data collection software anywhere that actually showed you exactly what it was that you were actually sending to them. Now, I've heard them, you know, had them tell me in a pop-up or a prompt or a dialogue that, hey, this is uh, going to be sent. This information is going to be sent. But you all know that there's probably a little bit more than that or maybe a little bit less. I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to, to argue that, that they're sending everything, but there could have been more or less sent than what was said. So you can't truly trust that what they tell you is going to be sent as the truth. And that being said, this here kind of erases all of that and lets you know exactly what's being sent. I guess all you have to do is redirect it to a server of your place, open it up, uh, or file, you know, onto your folder and, and your, on your computer, open it up, and you can literally see what's being what's being sent. So that's kind of cool. Uh, one other thing that the article went on to mention was down here is that uh, one of the main goals of the metrics, it's right here where I'm reading it out. One of the main goals of the metrics is... Uh, collection to of its collections to analyze whether red hat is achieving the goal to make fedora workstation the premier developer platform for cloud software and development and also end users too because what they're going to be collecting is telemetry on um what kind of tools you're using uh to create uh like like for their 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 uh toolbox for the um uh, cloud they want to know how many ides are the most popular ones that are being used by the and, and the run times that they use are being used by the container developers and using their toolbox when they create their containers uh also uh some of the other metrics that they could use were it wants to inform of uh decisions for uh the gnome uh the gnome uh, uh use like uh they can collect specific metrics as like how many times you access the, the GNOME Software Center? You know, uh, how many times uh, you click on a certain panel and a setting within a panel. That's what they use to actually uh, make GNOME 40 whatever better or worse. They turn those metrics over and they turn on and off the different functions or condense all the functions. Like they notice that this panel is getting i'm pretty sure that is what had a lot to do with the redesign of the 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 uh, uh power session panel where they put all like the the icons and the volume and the microphone instead of being individual ones in a taskbar or in a tra system tray they made the system tray come you know compatible or compact and put them all in there and then you click on it to get to whichever the ones that are used the most are the ones that are all open at the top already easy to access otherwise you click on a button and it takes you to a second thing that opens up now they they, they do use it for that also another one that, that was i thought was interesting is um which i forgot because i hadn't been using uh id hard drives and or uh, uh hard disk drives and forever i've been using sdds uh solid states for a long time since they pretty much all came out and one of the functions that they used to have was a read ahead in system D. And what that did is it read it right ahead as uh, to other options that would open up and it would make your boot times a lot faster and apps open a lot faster. And so one of the things that they noticed is in their data collection they've been using in the past is that um, a lot of people didn't have, so they assumed a lot of people didn't have uh, hard disk drives anymore that they wound up and mostly had solid state drives so they got rid of that read ahead function in their kernel and it 
made the boot time a lot faster. Obviously, because the less you have running in the beginning, the less time it takes to boot. And so uh, now with this telemetry that they're going to start collecting or trying to collect, they can actually collect the data to, to support whether or not you need that function or not implemented back in again. And if you do, then maybe they'll develop another ISO that has that actual uh, implementation added and turned on in the kernel. Uh, and you could, you know, they could fine tune kernels to better use uh, or uh, yeah, kernels to better use and ISOs that they build to better use. Also, uh, another great tool that they were talking about using th that that telemetry could work with is actually also in, in, in the different brands of hardware that you have. Now, that is great for any software developer, whether it's an OS, whether it's just an actual software that you're developing for application to be used in an OS, uh, that is a wonderful thing too, because that gives you enough telemetry data to know what most people are using. And so when you build it, you can build it to their to their generalized hardware states that they use in that platform. One of the examples that they gave was in laptop, you know, getting laptop IDs for like Lenovo, uh, so that that way they could report back to Lenovo or work with Lenovo to find out the hardware parameters and this, that, and other, and they can implement stuff that, that's needed to help support that laptop. So you have a more seamless, greater experience across the board. Whether you're a software developer, an end user, uh, whatever, you know, they, they can they can do that. It's certainly interesting that it's a forward step, forward thinking, a uh, way of collecting information that is viable and useful to the distro maintainers, software developers, uh, to help them better their production, better their applications or softwares, and stay ahead of the curve and stay along with the going things that are the trends that are going right now. Whether it's people using older hardware or whether it's people using newer hardware, but either way, you're covered, and uh, it just helps fine-tune it that much better that I think is very impressive and I'm excited to see that kind of telemetry because it's actually collecting the right type of telemetry not the garbage telemetry that most like Google and all these guys want to collect you know which way they could promote this or insert some type of ad or ad driven type garbage this is the actual stuff that counts so kudos to you Fedora great job on that man and as always Fedora you know you guys are always innovating and creating good things man. i i i known you for many many years and so uh it's awesome it's awesome that you guys are doing that guys tell me what you guys think tell me you know how you feel about it uh what you're looking forward to if you're or what you're not looking forward to in it either way just leave a comment down below also you know uh i just want to say thanks for all that you guys do and the continued support that you guys do uh, as always, I will bid you to keep doing what you do, keep on Linuxing, stay blessed, and above all, have a great day, and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye.